UPS shipped the box to the client. Client didn't see the box, tripped over the box, broke his clavicle and broke his hip. He ended up suing UPS, Amazon, and our third party seller. It was $32,000 to defend him from the lawsuit. The dude tripped over a box. My yeah. client had nothing to do with it. And it was $32,000 in legal fees just to get his name dropped. Thank you guys for joining. Let me know um, in the comments if you're watching this live or if you're on replay. Um, that would be really cool. I don't want to take too much of everybody's time because I know that everybody's time is valuable. Um, our special guest today, I've been waiting for this for a while because I get these questions literally every single day. You know, do I need business insurance? Do I need product liability insurance? Why do I need it? How do I go find it? Um, what does it actually do? What am I paying for? You know, a million questions. I'm like, ah. I mean, I can answer, but we need to bring on the number one e-commerce insurance expert. And we did it. We finally did it. Ashley Haddon is here and we're so thankful that she's taken um, some time out of her valuable and busy day to join us. So without further ado, I'll let uh, Ashlyn kind of introduce herself, tell her story, tell her what she does and, and she can kind of give us the best tips for e-commerce business insurance. Perfect. Ashlyn, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, so kind of a little bit of background on me. I started my career in banking. I was a branch manager um, in a bank for the longest time. I was moving away from the Chicagoland area back home in Indiana and kind of just wanted to get out of the banking field. I was kind of sick and tired of it. And one of my friends had said, hey, one of these insurance carriers is hiring. Why don't you go sell insurance? And I was like, uh, absolutely not. I don't want to be a used car salesman. I don't, I, I don't want to sell insurance. But then she came back and said, hey, I'll get a bonus if you just take the interview. So will you just interview for it? So I interviewed for the position and the gentleman said that this was a man's industry and that those men would outsell you every day. So I didn't want to sell insurance, but I had a chip on my shoulder. So I said, sure, I'll take the job and I'm going to prove you wrong. And I was the top rep in the state, third in the entire company, um, except like rookie of the year, accepted my award on stage and sent him a message and said, who can't sell insurance now? So I did that for a couple of years. Um, and I, I, hope you, I hope you posted that on your wall too, somewhere. That, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's amazing. Uh, I do still have the picture. There might be a, a few pictures left on my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can remember. Yeah. Um, and then I did that for a couple of years for a captive um, agency, which means I can only sell one product, one choice. Um, and my clients were like, hey, Ashlyn, this company keeps raising my rates. I don't want to leave you, but I got to find something else. And I quickly realized that I wanted to start my own agency and be able to have multiple different carriers. So when we got mad at our company, we can divorce our company and move someplace else. And then we still could stay together. So I decided to open my own agency and one of my clients came to me uh, one day and said, hey, I'm selling on Amazon. They're talking about this liability policy. Can you help me? And I was like, Chris, I didn't even know there was third party sellers on Amazon. I, I thought Amazon sold everything. Um, insurance companies don't know what you do, don't like what you do. I don't know if I can find you a policy. I don't think it's worth my time. And he kept bugging me and bugging me. And I finally was able to find him a policy and he came back and he's like, hey, I've got this Facebook group that I run and there's 15,000 of us in there. Can I share your information? And so I was like, yeah, sure. And call after call, all I heard from these third party sellers was that nobody would listen to him. Nobody understood. Nobody in the insurance carriers wanted to do business with them. And I really felt like you guys were the redheaded stepchildren. Like nobody wanted to help. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to help. I, and I kind of just like tumbled into this and it's kind of become my baby. I sleep, drink and dream of Amazon. I wake up in the morning and I'm Googling, you know, what's happening. So it's definitely engulfed my life. Um, and I'm just in love with the 
brotherhood of your guys' community and how you guys really want to help each other grow and learn. And it's been an absolutely amazing five years now on my own agency. And you guys are crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> five years is is awesome. That's a huge milestone. It really is yeah. uh, on your own for anything. I mean, I have my own businesses too, own law firm. And it's, it's, um, it's one of those big marks, you know, if you can get to five years, it's great. June um, will be five years. So it's that's so excited. cool. Well, yeah. well, con early congratulations to you. Thank you. So now we're, we're very focused on e-commerce and helping e-commerce sellers, um, newbies, brand newbies up to billion dollar sellers. We've got many billion dollar sellers. Um, so yeah, everywhere in between. That's awesome. So do you want me to talk about like what, what's required? Yeah. So what, that? so why, let's start with why the, one of the biggest things I get is why any type of insurance for your business, right? For your e-commerce business. You know, people say, oh, I have, I have a limited liability company. You know, I don't want to pay for insurance. So why do I need it? So why, yeah. why do they need it? So try to pick up the phone and call your LLC and say, hey, will you come defend me from the lawsuit? It's not going to happen. Yes, having a business entity is amazing. Having an LLC, a corporation, that's great. But you cannot pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, I've been sued. Come help me. That's where a liability policy is going to be helpful. If you're just doing RA, OA, and wholesale, I agree. You probably will never be held liable for a million dollar um, payout. Probably not. But if you don't have a policy, then you have to pay to defend yourself on your own. And I don't know about you in your state, but product liability attorneys are somewhere between $400 and $450 an hour in Indiana. You don't have an insurance policy, you're gonna be paying for that on your own. If you had an insurance policy, then the insurance company has the duty to defend you. They have to defend you in those lawsuits. So you probably aren't gonna have a million dollar lawsuit that you're gonna have to be responsible for, but you might have 30 to $60,000 in legal fees that you have to pay for. So that's first and foremost, you gotta get the attorney off your back. Second off, Amazon requires it. They said, if you don't have it, they can suspend you. Um, a lot of my clients come to me and say, well, they've never asked for it. It's not required. It's in your terms of service. If you are a pro seller, it says I, you, you agree that you have insurance, that you will maintain insurance and that you will indemnify Amazon in the case of a lawsuit. So if you're a pro seller and you don't have insurance, you are already breaking terms of service and they could suspend you in a heartbeat. So that's oh, second is, is making sure that you comply with those TOSs. Do, do you know if any of the other platforms have that insurance requirement? I mean, Amazon's a little different because they're the ones doing all the packaging. They're the, they're holding everything right. So it's their kind of their name on the line for the most part. But you know, like Shopify, Etsy, do any of those have the insurance requirements too? So the only only other one right now that is like super cracking down is Wayfair and Walmart.com. Those Got two it. are definitely cracking down on theirs too. Walmart's really, really tough. Um, they are checking them from the get go. You can't even get a contract with them without providing your certificate of insurance. So if you're looking to expand to Walmart.com. Um, or even Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond is pretty tough too. So expanding on those other platforms, you're gonna have to have a policy. Now, Amazon isn't, hasn't been policing the certificate of insurance since I started, since five years ago. They just said, hey, it's in the terms of service, you're supposed to have it, but they haven't really been asking for it until a couple of months ago. So a couple of months ago, they came out and said, okay, we're gonna start policing this, if you have $10,000 in, in sales for three months consecutively, they're gonna require the certificate of insurance. So they're mm -hmm. kind of using that now as a starting point to start policing this. So if you're doing those sales now, absolutely get a policy and get that certificate of insurance over to them because they can suspend you very quickly if you don't have it. So it sounds gonna uh, start an insurance platform. <laughs> oh my God. Started doing that with lawyers a little bit. They have an IP accelerator program similar. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny. 
Brenda actually said Jane. So Jane, the platform uh, requires it requires insurance as well. So that's like kind of that's like a um, it's like an Amazon, right? You're you're putting your um, products on their site, and they're you know it's it's not like you have your own site, but you're selling it through their right. platform. So it's kind of a similar concept. Thanks, Brenda, for that information. I, you know, let me know, guys, in the chat if there's any other platforms out there that you sell on that may require it. And then you should also look at the terms of service. So Amazon, like Ashlyn said, in the terms of service, the insurance is required. Look at, you know, wherever you're selling, make sure that if there's an insurance piece that's required that you have it, you should have it anyway, but make sure that you're following that. And know that as long as your platforms are all done under the same business entity, you don't need an insurance policy for every platform you're selling on. So if mm -hmm. I sell on Wayfair, Jet, eBay, and Amazon, and all of that goes through one business entity, you can get one policy that covers all of those platforms. Now, if you set up business entity A, business entity B, business entity C, then yeah, you're gonna need three policies because um, insurance covers your business, not the platform you're selling on. So you could get a policy that covers all of those different platforms under, under one policy and one premium. Perfect. And I, I know I'm going to get this question because I get this DBA question all the time. A lot of my e-com seller clients, um, they might have one LLC, right? But they'll have multiple DBAs, multiple brands. They'll, they still only need one insurance policy, right? For exactly. the LLC, even if they have 10 DBAs. Okay, perfect. Exactly. Awesome. Yep. And another question we get a lot um, along with that is the cost. Everyone's like, how much, how much, how much? And I know you're going to hate this answer, but it, it depends. Um, it depends on what you're selling, where you're sourcing from, how much your sales are. If you're doing $250,000 in sales, that's going to be a heck of a lot different than someone who's doing a million dollars in sales. If you're selling a fidget spinner with knives on the end of it, it's going to be different than, you know, a coffee cup. But it really does depend um, on what you're selling, where you're sourcing from, and how much. But some of the base policies for newbie sellers could be around five hundred dollars a year. I mean, it's mm. that cheap. It's it's very inexpensive. Um, moving up to somebody who's private label could be a couple of thousand dollars a year. If you're selling that fidget spinner with knives on the end of it, it could be ten thousand dollars a year. I mean, it really does depend. Um, your high risk products. Anything that goes on your body, in your body, for a pet or for a baby, um, in exercise equipment right now. Those are the top five things that if you're selling anything in that category, get your insurance now. We are seeing lots and lots of claims in those in those five categories. That, I mean, that makes sense. You know, the riskier they are, obviously the, the premiums are going to be higher because there's more of a chance of what, somebody getting hurt, right? Or somebody not using the product correctly, you know, whatever it is, right? But remember, if you have the insurance um, and something happens where you get sued, you have that lawyer. The insurance company lawyer is going to help you. Um, obviously, I'm a lawyer. I know per firsthand. I mean, lawsuits, lawyer fees are can be $100,000 depending upon what it is, right? Yeah. Um, that could literally, that could put your business under. For most people, it would. So we yeah. had a claim in the end of November um, where somebody had ordered on Amazon and shipped the box, uh, UPS shipped the box to the client. Client didn't see the box, tripped over the box, broke his clavicle and broke his hip. He ended up suing UPS, Amazon, and our third party seller. It was $32,000 to defend him from the lawsuit. The dude tripped over a box. Yeah. My client had nothing to do with it and it was $32,000 in legal fees just to get his name dropped. Yeah, you're it, it, it's a really good point you bring that up because there you can only do so much, right? You you're, you're going to make your product safe, right? There's only so much you can do in that sense. There's only so much you can do to warn your clients or warn your customers how to use it correctly. But there something's always going to happen like tripping over the packaging, right? Like the yeah. ladders are a prime example for me. Somebody's always going to use a ladder the wrong way. Right? <laughs> Somebody's always going to fall off a ladder, right? There's only so many warnings and videos and, and instruction manuals that you can do, right? But that's why we have those things, right? That doesn't that doesn't mean they're not going to sue you, or that doesn't mean that you're not going to win a lawsuit. But you still have to defend it. You can't just sit there and not do anything. And, right. and you know, why worry about having to pay out of pocket for 
a lawyer just have the insurance company handle it and and move on and and you know run your business so yeah well here's another horror story with you're, you're saying you know failure to warn or warning labels we had a client doing um exercise equipment exercise equipment's huge right now with covid because everybody was staying home and wanted to get fit um she did a private label like fitness bar that you put in the frame of your door and you're like mm. pull up on it she did an amazing job she had videos she, um where it talked about how to install it making sure it was installed properly she had warning labels she had um the like printout that you put in it like everything to a t that we could think of to make sure that she informed the consumer of how to install it and make sure it was installed correctly and someone again felt used it incorrectly or installed it incorrectly fell got a head concussion um we ended up settling at six hundred and sixty two thousand dollars it's for head injury yeah it's it's nuts you know like there i mean there's a million examples i hate to use like an extreme example but look at like the peloton treadmill right now right i mean yeah. i think most people know what's going on with that i mean that's whether peloton did something wrong or not we don't know um but those legal fees and and insurance claims are just going to be astronomical i can imagine um so yeah it's it, it's I don't want to say better safe than sorry, but it's like a must, you know, yeah. it's literally like a must. And, and, and she paid, her policy was about $4,000 a year and you get $660,000 worth of payout. It's totally worth it. Totally yeah. worth a peace of mind. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I think we talked about attorney on your side, but these are the benefits. Um, Amazon and some other platforms require it. What other things should they be considering as a benefit, I guess, to having insurance or things to, to look at when they're when they're looking for insurance or the types of insurance. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that you need to look for is making sure that you've got an agent who knows what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of local mom and pop shops on the corner that say, "Hey, you know, I can help you. You know, I'll write it for you." Well, they're not classing it correctly. There isn't an online exposure. Um, if you say, you know, I, I'm FBA or I drop ship or you know, these types of things, or I white label, they don't know the lingo. They don't know what you know. They don't, you know, they're not engulfed in this every single day. And they could write you a policy that you think is going to have protection that really doesn't have the right protection. So make sure you have an agent who knows what you know. Um, I also say I have an agent that knows what you know, but not do what you do. There are some agents out there that sell on Amazon too. Um, and I honestly think it's a conflict of interest because we look at everything that you sell. Like we have to have your storefront. Sometimes we have to have your suppliers and manufacturers. So you work really hard to source and find those, those products that are going to sell. Make sure that you don't have to turn that over to somebody else. Um, you know, even if they, they sign a non-disclosure, you can't unsee something. Sure. It's not like they're going to be outsourcing like, oh, well, Joe Smith sells that, so I can't sell it. No, I know Joe Smith sells that, and I know he's making bank on that, so I'm going to source it too. So just make sure that your your agent doesn't sell also. Yeah, do, um, your, do your due diligence on searching for your agent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just ask right. them, hey, do you sell on Amazon? Right. And if the answer is yes, maybe look someplace else. Right, right. Another thing that we kind of talked about before we went live is inventory coverage. That's something that I highly, highly, highly recommend. If you have inventory in your house, your garage, your basement, um, we get this all the time where clients are like, oh, well, my homeowner's insurance will cover that. Your homeowners will not cover it unless you can lie to them that you have 10,000 toothbrushes because you only brush your teeth one time with a toothbrush they're gonna know it's for a business and they're gonna completely deny the claim so remember business is business personal is personal make sure you have your business stuff separate than your personal and even if like you're using a 3pl or um a prep center ask them do you have coverage for my products that are stored at your location if they say yes say prove it give me a certificate of insurance showing me that my products are covered if they're not covered Add it to your policy. It's, again, it's so inexpensive to add these types of endorsements that it's stupid not to do it. It's absolutely crazy. Make sure your assets are protected. And 
if you've got $50,000 in products and there's a fire in your house or a theft in your house, and it's going to be hard to replace that $50,000 in product, then you need to insure it. That is, that's such a good point. It really is because a lot of our sellers do Shopify um, or other platforms where they're, they're packaging themselves. It's, they're not doing Amazon and they're not, it, it's not in an Amazon warehouse, but at their house, or like you said, even at a third party warehouse. And yeah, we can ask for the certificates from the third party warehouse, but what is that at the, at the end of the day, what does that really mean? Right. The next day they could cancel it. Absolutely. So having your own policy and covering those products, even if they're at a separate warehouse is totally key. And, and like you said, I mean, the cost of that is probably minimal. Well, it's yeah. definitely minimal compared to the risk of not having it. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's a lot less than you probably think. And you can't come to me after there's a problem and say, hey, can you insure this now? <laughs> right. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can insure a Bernie building. <laughs> right, that's, that's too funny. Oh my gosh. It happens all um, the time. You think I'm crazy, but it, it really does. I, hey, why not try it? But you're not, you're not gonna get anywhere, but you might as well try right. like the initiative. Um, that's too funny. Now, let's talk about like the types, the major types of insurance, yeah. right? I mean, we, I think we've all heard like, uh, business liability insurance and products liability insurance. Can you kind of go over the, yeah, the major Good question. pieces that should be So place? Amazon does require the general liability with product um, liability. So they do require both. General liability is going to be more what you do or say as a business. So I have this pen and I say, um, this pen is going to make you look 10 pounds skinnier just by holding it next to your face. And I say, no, it doesn't make me feel 10 pounds skinnier and I sue you for false advertisement. That's gonna be under your general liability. Now I take this pen and I stab it in my eye and now I go blind in my eye. That's product liability. That's what your products do to harm someone else. So you need both of those. If you get a quote online and it's like $300, it's probably not general liability and product liability. It's probably just general liability. And you don't need just general liability because you are selling products. You need product liability. Um, so if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. There's carriers out there right now that are targeting e-com sellers that are selling a $300 policy that does not have product liability. They're like, Amazon sellers, come here and buy this insurance. And when you look at their policy, it has no product liability and it doesn't have defense coverage. And that's where your attorney comes in. That You don't have defense coverage then you really don't have much at all. So make sure that your policy that you have is the correct policy. Again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, definitely read them too. Policies are very, I mean, I've read a million. Some can be extremely Snooze long, fest. right? Yeah, it, <laughs> make sure if you have a good agent right make sure that they're they'll go through it with you just to kind of say all right here's where this says here's the defense language here's this language right um don't be afraid to ask those kind of things yeah. just to make sure that you know all your scenarios are covered if something happens and i again i don't want to toot my own horn but with us being a broker we get to find the best product at the best price so it's it's not like one company out there saying yeah my product's the best you know an independent broker is going to give you the best choice out there. They're not tied to an individual company. Um, so you're going to get a better policy um, at a better price if you use a brokerage company. So, all right, so we get general liability insurance, product, product liability. liability. We talked about inventory. Inventory. Is that, what do you call it? Is that just inventory insurance? What business, do you personal property. Yeah. Okay. Another big thing that we see um, with third-party sellers is the need for commercial auto. Mm. Again, business is business, personal is personal. A lot of people say, well, I have personal insurance, um, but if you're using your vehicle for more than 50% of the time for business, you might need a commercial auto policy. So if you're sourcing and you go from Kohl's to Target um, and you're, you cause an accident, your personal auto insurance can deny the, the liability claim because you're on business use. Um, keep that in mind, like it might be worth getting a commercial auto policy if you're using that vehicle more often for business than you are for personal. That's a really good point because a lot of the, a lot of times, and I do this for my business, my, my car is in the name of my business. Um, you know, we do it for taxes and things like that. A lot of the sellers on here, again, they're going back and forth from their warehouses to the mailbox, to, to here, to there, wherever. And if you're also writing all that off, you got to be careful too, because you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how that works, but 
you got to be consistent, right? So it's either commercial use. If it's in the business name, then you absolutely need a commercial policy. Yeah, you right. Exactly. You might be able to get away with, you know, a personal with it's in your personal name, saying, "Hey, I use this more for personal than business." But yeah. obviously, if it's in a business name, they know it's for business. They know that you know it's for business, and they will absolutely deny a claim in a heartbeat. So if anybody is driving a vehicle now in a business name, you need to get a commercial auto policy. And then yeah. your commercial auto premium is write off. Yeah, that's yeah. We all love write offs. We all love yeah. taxes, right? <laughs> which is why the car's in that name anyway. Exactly. Um, so that is that's awesome. All right, so cool. So general liability, product liability. You got your personal property slash inventory, commercial auto. What about um, you know? You hear a lot now about cyber um, mm -hmm. liability insurance. Is that is that something that we need to think about at all? You know, we have our websites and stuff like that. Is that personal? You know, there's a lot of personal info theft out there and things like that. Data yeah. breaches. Is it something to think about? Yeah. So if you're if you have your own website and you're collecting non-public private information, absolutely having cyber. But if you don't have your own website and you're just using Amazon, um, I wouldn't say it's 100 percent necessary yet. Uh, once you get that website, absolutely. Another thing that we've seen a lot lately um, is, I'm gonna call it like invoicing manipulation. So hackers will get into your system and let's say I'm sending, I'm getting an invoice from my wholesaler and my wholesaler's email address is RN1234. The hackers will come in and change change the email address to like an M1234. So it looks like an R and an N. So it looks like an email address that you're normally comfortable with. Then they will change your invoice to have a different routing and account number. So you wire your information to the hacker's account. So you, it looks like you've got a regular invoice from your, your wholesaler. You normally send it to XYZ. You don't know that the, the, routing and account numbers change, you wire the funds, you are now SOL, there is no coverage, your bank won't do anything because you initiated the wire on your own free will and that money is gone. So there's actually an endorsement for cyber um, theft like that. That is such a complex, like uh, if if these hackers could put that energy into something good, it would be amazing. Right? <laughs> That's like a... That is a complex plan. Wow. Um, yeah. So we had somebody a couple a couple of uh, well, it's been about a year, you know, sent a wire at seventy five thousand dollars, and there was nothing they could do about it. The the bank wouldn't do anything. You can't do anything. You initiated it. You sent it. You said this is where it's supposed to go. So it's a little geez. scary. So oh my god, that's crazy. All right. So we have the general liability product. We have all these great insurance. Um, policies that we can get. Um, but gen you know, general liability, product liability, those are the two big ones, yeah. right? And like um, what we do at our agency, we have an application that walks through like, what are your risks? We'll ask the question, are you using your, your personal vehicle for business use? Are you shipping um, from overseas? Are you doing this? You know, again, that's why it's so important to have somebody who knows what you're doing. We build a policy around your risk. Here's everything that you you're, you're at risk for. And if you say, hey, Ashlyn, I don't want the commercial auto or I don't want the cyber or I don't want this, then you can take those things off. But at least you see what a 100% protection type of policy looks looks like. And then you could, excuse me, you can reduce it from there. Now, what if, you know, a lot of our sellers, you know, you're changing products all the time. You might sell this. Now you don't sell this or you might add this, this and this. How does that all work? I yeah. Mean, so if you are not doing private label, so I'm gonna leave private label off the table for this. If you're just doing a mix of products, um, RA, OA, and wholesale, I don't have to know every single time. Um, you do send us the link in the beginning. We do look through and make sure you're not selling like grenades and children. <laughs> <laughs> and then we audit periodically to make sure that there's nothing added. So you don't have to tell me um, as long as you stay out of private label. Now, once you get to private label, then you do have to tell me. Um, we do have to do named products. So, you know, I could say kitchen utensils. And then we ensure kitchen utensils. But every time you add a ladle versus a spoon, I don't need to know. But I need to know that you went from kitchen utensils to cell phone covers, mm -hmm. something like that. Categories, classic. Yeah, I got exactly. It. 
Um, and that's just a quick email. Hey, Ashlyn, I decided that I want to start selling XYZ. Here's the link. Boom, we're done. We add it to the policy. Um, I always say like if you're outsourcing and you're looking to purchase a product, I'm on Facebook all of the time. Snap a picture, send it to me and say, hey, Ashlyn, what do you think about this? I'll tell you absolutely not. Stay away. <laughs> or like, yeah, sure, that's fine. So feel free you know, to reach a, out to me. That's a really great resource to uh, to have too because it's another check on on products. I mean, I'm an e-com seller myself and you know, as a lawyer, it's tough for me to get around the risky stuff, right? I know there's a huge benefit to selling a lot of it, but that's just that's just my my sales technique. It is, yeah. No, but that's another good check, you know. Hey, Ashlyn, you know, I'm planning to sell whatever, you know, s'mores, a s'mores kit, something. Right. Um, would you know, what's the insurance look like? What's the risk level? Should I do this? Um, so that's cool. I love that. Well, I, I mean, had one the other day. <laughs> um, they wanted to get into sexual wellness type product, and I was like, mm. cool. But you're gonna be looking at like seventy five hundred dollars a year, and they're like, oh no, absolutely not. I, I it's off the table now. We're gonna pick something totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a gauge. Like the more expensive insurance costs, the riskier the product. Basically, it basically is right. So yeah. Um, but sometimes it's the best product that needs to be sold on Amazon, and you're gonna make yeah. a bunch of money on it. That's that's the that's what you weigh, right? Of right. Course, 100%. More risk, more reward, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, that's the name of the game. That is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what other, what other tips, if anything, do you have for insurance? I mean, I, I cannot stress it enough that if you don't have, well, number one, if you don't have an insurance policy in place um, for your business or any part of your business, start looking now. And if you do look at it again, do like a self audit. Do I have, you know, after watching this with Ashton, do I have what I need? I should go look at my policy. Do I actually like my agent, my broker? Should I look elsewhere? Um, a lot of brokers, right? And I know Ashton's agency does it too. They'll bundle a lot of things together. So yeah. if you have homeowner's insurance, life insurance, right? You can get a bundle and have it all in one spot instead of having state farm homeowner, homeowner's insurance, a Geico car insurance, whatever it would be, and makes life a lot easier. Um, maybe you get a better deal. Maybe you don't. I'm not sure how that works, but at least you have it all with a trusted source um, and somebody and that you can have a policy and you just want to see if it's the right policy. Mention this podcast and say, hey, I heard you on this podcast. You said that you would look at it. I will not charge you to look at it. I will tell you honestly if this looks fine or if there's any changes or suggestions or like, no, this is absolutely not the right thing. So please feel free to reach out and at least say, hey, do I have the right coverage? I will Guys, absolutely. Did you, you, did you hear that bonus? That is that is incredible. <laughs> Ashlyn just said, if you have a policy in place, she will look at it. Her team will look at it to make sure whatever should be there is there. That's a free audit, guys. Take advantage of it. And well, I'll make sure in the chat, I'll make sure to put your information, you know, Absolutely. after this, we can uh, find out how to reach you the best way and we can put yeah. it in the group. So my only other tip is um, if you're gonna act or you're gonna be a business and act, act like a business, you know, everybody says, hey, you know, I, I'm a business owner and I sell on Amazon. Well then act like a business owner. If you had a brick and mortar store, there's no way you would go without insurance. So just because you sit behind a computer does not mean you're untouchable. The claims we've seen over the last 15 months um, on online retailers have exploded. So you're not untouchable. People don't know you're a third party seller. People think they're suing Amazon. They don't care. They think Amazon's got big pockets. They don't realize, you know, it's a small town person in Ohio. They just don't understand. So if you wanna be a business, act like a business and have insurance like a true business. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that because on the legal side, when I'm setting up businesses, LLCs and corporations, um, you know, one of the things, one of the, I don't want to say, one of the objections I get a lot is, oh, I'm just starting out, I'm a small business. Nobody, I'm not going to get sued. Why are they going to sue me? 53% of small businesses get sued or involved in some type of lawsuit. You know, I'm, some people in this group have been involved in lawsuits. It's, it's not that you did anything wrong. Right, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have number one a potentially an un, unhappy customer, right? That trips over a box for whatever reason. Um, they're going to sue you. So why would you pay out of pocket for attorneys? It's funny I'm giving like my like, <laughs> my business away, right? I'm like, why would you pay for me when um, 
when you could when you pay through for insurance and that's not the only benefit that's just a major benefit and then peace of mind right um it's also required in in certain circumstances like jane and amazon and other platforms but just think of it that way i mean you almost have to go into it thinking that you will be involved in a lawsuit businesses are just that's just the nature and the riskiness of going into business besides your customers you have vendors you have um competitors you know there's a lot yeah. of other people besides your customers that are going to try to go after you you know it's and like, and it, we, we broke it down for a customer because he was sell, um last week he was selling um a very high risk product and the the policy was expensive it was over ten thousand dollars um but it was super high risk and i i broke it down and i'm like okay for 42 cents a unit 42 cents a unit do you not think it's worth a peace of mind of knowing that you have a million dollars in coverage take the cost divided per unit and break it down that way sometimes it's less than a cent per unit that you you you're paying to protect your to protect your assets that's such a good point ash and that really is such a good way to look at it because i mean in that case 42 cents per unit might be a lot for him but say it's like five cents per unit for you guys right i mean you could almost add that to the cost of the product right. <laughs> you, know, you could you know instead of being 20 dollars, it can be 20 and five cents so you can it could pay for itself and Absolutely. it's not going to destroy your sales you know um that's a really good way to look at it it, it really i never looked at it like that yeah cool. um i know it's the middle of the day i know some of you at work and everything like that again let me know if you're live or on replay if you have any questions Put them in the chat even after this on replay. Ashlyn's in the group, and obviously it's my group. We'll we'll get to them. Absolutely, we really will, I'm sure you'll have a lot. Um, also, before Ashlyn gives all her her information on how to reach her and get in touch with her, um, I did that. I don't know if you saw it. I did that little bribe prize thing. I thought it was kind of cool. I was yeah. giving a fifty dollar Amazon gift card away to wh whatever group member invited the most people out of the group to watch this which was a lot. And Trish, Trish, you won 40 Woo! members, which is awesome. So Trish, I will um, DM you the $50 gift card um, and have fun with it. Buy anything on Amazon, obviously. So <laughs> <laughs> as long as you buy it from him. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> and I've got an offer for your listeners too. Yes, so yes. Anyone who mentions this podcast will do 50% off our agency fee. Oh my gosh. I am writing that down. <laughs> that is amazing. Guys, did you hear that? 50% off agency fee. You got to take advantage of it. How did they, um, they just have to mention this, right? Mention this podcast. Yeah. Hey, I mention heard you on the podcast. You said okay. something about 50% off the agency fee and we'll, we'll put that on there for you. How do they get in contact with you? So best way is to do it through the website. We've got the Streamline okay. application and that's www.ecom.insure. So E-C-O-M dot I-N-S-U-R-E. No dot com afterwards, just dot insure. Um, you can email us at sales at Ashland Haddon Insurance. You can find me on Facebook, Ashland D. Haddon, Ecom Insurance. But I'm all over everywhere. Send you can find her in this group. I'll find them. <laughs> yeah, she's in, she's in this group too. And I'll put all that information in um, in the group as well so you guys have it. But 50%, that is so kind of you. Thank you, Ashlyn. Thanks That's, for I having that. me. I really appreciate it. You're Thank you for all this value. I know that uh, I know that everybody's going to get so much value out of it. So Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Anybody has questions, drop them in the chat and I will keep an eye or the comments. I will definitely keep an eye on it tonight. Perfect. Have a great day, guys. Bye.